Good afternoon, folks. The Real Captain Kirk here live from Weather Trends 360 studio here in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. It is Monday morning after the big storm here in the Northeast. Um, one of the biggest we've had, actually, uh, here in outside Weather Trends 360 studio. It was quite the winter wonderland last night. Um, the neat thing about uh, spring storms is that this time of year is that they tend to not stick around too much. The snow melts with a very high sun angle. Um, so, again, uh, pretty. So, enjoy it while it lasts. But, uh, the March sun will definitely do a number on uh, even about the eight, nine inches that we had here. Actually, we had almost 14 inches uh, from the Friday, Saturday, and Sunday event. We had three events come through the northeast here. Um, spring is still officially 15 days, about nine hours, 53 minutes, and 33 seconds away. Uh, it's probably going to be a while before we see something any of this pretty uh, for the spring uh, with light of how uh, much snow is on the ground. I uh, thought we'd real quick recap uh, season-to-date snowfall through this morning. Uh, these are some select cities. Uh, Caribou's top on the list, continues to top the list at 151.4 inches. That's most in 11 years. Uh, it's hard to believe it's still only the most in 11. They actually had more. Uh, Buffalo over 112 as well. Uh, here outside Weather Trends 360 Studios, we've uh, quickly approached uh, our seasonal average of about 31.8 inches, uh, most in three years to date, uh, above average. And uh, we may not be done just yet. So U.S. overall, most snow in five years for this season. Uh, we're up about 26% over last year for the nation as a whole and 11% above average. Snow cover, again, is kind of off the charts here again this morning, about 50 57% of us actually with snow on the ground. Uh, that's way above the average of about 35%. Um, so, again, a lot of snow to melt. Uh, this, unfortunately, does keep it cold. Um, it's kind of like a little refrigerator, obviously, with this much snow on the ground. And uh, the other thing that's going to keep it cold is this polar vortex. Uh, you see the kind of fragmented, uh, frayed view of the polar vortex here. Anytime that happens, it allows little chunks of it to come down. And it is this week um, into the east, back to much of the Midwest, east, Great Lakes, northeast. Again, near record cold, single digits outside our offices here, expected uh, midweek. Uh, so pretty brutally cold for uh, early March. Uh, the good news is you can see it here kind of tightens up uh, toward we get to mid-March. And usually that's a sign that it's back to being where it belongs, over the poles. Uh, so again, hopefully this is the last time we have to utter those words. Looking at this week, uh, 4 through 10 March, uh, it's the number one coldest in over 30 years for the U.S. overall. Just about everybody except maybe New Mexico and extreme South Florida has below average uh, high temps here this week. Uh, rainfall still pretty wet, uh, wettest in three years, seventh wettest in 30 years. And uh, while the snowfall may be a little less than last year, uh, still ninth snowiest in 30 years for the nation as a whole. Looking at the uh, jump ahead here to next week, 11 through 17 March, um, some moderation. Uh, again, you're not seeing the widespread, much below normals, but um, so pockets of uh, near to maybe even slightly above average in the northeast. Uh, it'll be more volatile, so we'll get some of these blowtorch kind of mild 50, 60 degree days, and then followed by another shot of cooler weather in the east. Uh, but overall, we'd say the temperatures next week are similar to a year ago, but that's still on the cold side for the U.S. overall, sixth colds in 30 years. What is in 26? So again, still a very wet, uh, moist pattern, a typical weak El Nino. Um, snowfall next week doesn't look to be as extreme, less, uh, at least in snow in three years, and maybe even a little bit below average for the nation, the nation as a whole here. Um, this uh, past week, we actually did a uh, farmcast uh, outlook for our farmer customers. Uh, so I encourage folks to check out their emails here for that. We talked about the El Nino, how we've gone from a weak La Nina this time last year to a weak El Nino this year. And most of the model consensus keeps us in that weak, borderline moderate uh, El Nino type scenario through the summer. That's a little unusual, uh, as we talked about in our uh, update to farmers here this uh, past Friday. Uh, this was some of the, the teasers here, but uh, this is the kind of the summer trends. Uh, high temps on the left versus a year ago. Again, most of the country is obviously cooler than, than a year ago. It's pretty hot. Um, generally, pattern would be more of a ridge west, trough in the central uh, Midwest. Uh, so again, not looking for really any major blowtorch hot type summer conditions. Um, across the country. So again, we think we have this uh, the coolest in four years for the Corn Belt, but the coolest in five years for the U.S. overall uh, was the theme for the for the farmers. And then rainfall here is maps on the left are trends versus last year, obviously much, much drier along the east um, compared to the near record shattering rainfall we had last year. Still near average, slightly above average. Uh, parts of the eastern PA, New Jersey area might actually be a little tad below average. Um, so a pretty dramatic shift, uh, at least from a year ago, but not looking for any widespread drought at all in our summer outlook. Um, this uh, One thing we are concerned about in this red-shaded area, and we're already seeing signs of that that move through the southeast here, is the tornado season. We do think it'll be more comparable to 2017 and not as bad as 2011, but those were some pretty active seasons um, with a lot of uh, tornadic activity way above average. Sadly, we're already approaching, I think, over 25 uh, fatalities due to tornadoes here that, uh, this year. 
Um, and I think that's approaching about what we've had the last two years combined. So sadly, it's off to a devastating uh, start. And uh, unfortunately, this may get worse as we get through the core of the tornado season. So just a little bit of what we talked about for the, the farmer customers here um, on Friday and the farm cast type product that we offer our farmers uh, a year ahead outlook for their specific farms. Uh, took advantage of the snow, took the little one outside. We made our uh, snow girl, if you will, um, with the little one and the uh, family photo here. Um, took her sledding, uh, you know, she kept saying faster, faster, faster. Um, at this point, the six inches of snow we had was pretty much melted. Uh, this was a Saturday afternoon. Uh, but she said faster, faster, and again. Um, so um, had a good time. Then we came inside and, uh, of course, warmed up and played, played Easter eggs here. So uh, with that, folks, again, we hope you have a, a great week. Um, be mindful again of the tornado season. Again, we're just getting started here. And, again, we do think, uh, unfortunately, uh, it's going to be a pretty active one. So uh, with that, folks, uh, God bless you, and we will see you this time next week.